What's going on, Josh with Lost Fitness. Today I'm not gonna waste any of your time. I'm gonna teach you how to do the glute hamstring raise, also known as the GHR. First things first is knowing what this is. Uh, so this is one of the variants of the machine. Um, on the screen here you can see there's a bunch of other looks for it. So make sure you know what it looks like because if you're trying to do this on a lower back extension which looks like this, it's just not gonna work, okay? So you gotta know the difference between the two. So next off, let's just jump into the benefits of this exercise. So the main benefit of this exercise is that you're gonna work your full hamstring. So we're gonna get two points of benefit, which are basically you're gonna have hip flexion and knee flexion. So you're working that whole total hamstring and you're really utilizing that eccentric rep. So you're really controlling your body weight and you have those two points of flexion being engaged the entire time. And that's what makes this the best posterior chain exercise in my opinion. They're absolutely fantastic. It can be a little awkward and it's more of an advanced lift. And the main negative or drawback is if you don't have really strong hamstrings or a good athletic background, these are gonna be very hard to perform but we're gonna show you the tips and tricks to get you there. First up, we're gonna jump into three common mistakes, and the reason we like to show the mistakes first is that when you can see what's really wrong, it really helps you illuminate and kind of open up to what is correct. So the first mistake is improper adjustment of this. Most basic machines like this one here that we have in our gym is just adjustable on this one plane with this leg um, kind of lock, I suppose you could call it. And the first mistake is just not using this actual backboard. This is here for a reason. This is for you to brace against, and this is gonna make the exercise more comfortable. Second is improper position of this. So you can see, when I have this really far back, I'm just doing a lower back extension. So I have way too much tension on my lower back and that's all that's doing because it's too far back. Now when I have it way too far forward, it's really wedging me in awkwardly. I can't get a full contraction of my glutes and it's just insanely hard because your body is a lever and the closer we have that lever and the further the lever is pushed away, the more tension there will be on the hamstring and it's almost an overload of tension, especially if you're really tall like me. I just can't even do a single rep as you can see. Mistake number two, and this is a very subtle one, but this kind of makes or breaks the exercise. So now that we got this sucker all set up, as you can see, um, I'm coming down and it looks like I'm partially doing it here. Yes, I'm contracting my glutes, but the issue is I'm lowering my back, transferring the tension off my glute to my back, and doing the majority of the exercise with my back, as you can see me doing right now. Now here's me doing it properly. As you can see, yes, my back is still an activator. This is a posterior chain exercise, so it will have some activation, but I'm trying to start the gist of the exercise like I would a hamstring curl. So I'm in position, I'm pulling against my hamstrings, pushing into the pad, transferring weight to my glute, pushing through and squeezing my glutes and my hamstrings as you can see me doing now. It's a very finicky, it's a slight difference. The easiest way to explain it is are you feeling your hamstrings in your butt or are you feeling in your lower back and that's how you know. I know this is very complicated because I really struggled um, making the mental distinction between the two but it really just comes down to mind muscle connection. So that's envisioning what you're working. So if I constantly think of keeping tension on my hamstring, which if you don't know is the back of your leg, and then through to my glutes, while keeping my back from where it's pulled back and engaged, I'm minimizing this hinging of my back and switching the hinging to my hamstrings, so that knee and hip joint, which you should be, that's gonna make all the difference. Number three is all about positioning, kind of adding on to what I just said. Uh, so if you're too low, quite simply, this is gonna be a really good kind of beginner adaptation because you're not gonna be fully engaging that hamstring. And once again, your body is the lever, right? The closer it is, so you're kind of balling yourself up, the less tension you are from stretching you out, the easier it's gonna be. So that's kind of your intro little session is to have it really low. However, it can be a mistake. People can use this as a crutch, go way too low, not really work their hamstring, only work half of it, and get no benefit. Now, a lot of the more advanced people say the higher the knee, the better. Wedge that sucker up there. It's gonna provide more tension. The negative with this is it's gonna put a lot of pressure on your knee, and knees are pretty sensitive. I don't like it whatsoever. So I like kind of this happy medium. As you can see with Kyle, he's got his knee right pretty much flush with this, maybe a little bit higher, and he's able to get a great hamstring engagement. So those are kind of the three little variations with where you put your knee. And uh, let's show you how to do this exercise now. All right, we're gonna go over the full thing now. Hopefully that helped explain it. Um, I find a lot of people don't push yourselves to learn with this. They just end up getting cheap and doing with mainly lower back, doing a little bit of hamstring, calling it a day. So I really challenge you to take the time to learn it right, play with things, play with adjustments, See what's best for you. This will really vary based on how long your tibia and fibia, your femur, all these things are. And that's going to kind of allow you to find your best position. And the best position for you is the one where you can get the most engagement and where you feel the most secure. So for me, I've kind of worked that out. I'm pretty tall, so I'm about at the third buckle here. And once again, every machine is going to be different. Um, so I don't know if it helps at all, but I'm 6'1. This is about what I'm working with. Uh, so right here. So next up, you're going to want to actually plant yourself in these little 
things, all of them should have it and they should have it backward. If I'm out of it like this, I'm wasting my time. You wanna plant those feet, okay? Next up, for the knee position, as you can see, it really depends on your comfort. I'm pretty tall and I'm not the best at these, so I can't have this high as I'd like. So I'm staying pretty much at the bottom of the pad here. Now next up is really kind of thinking like a hamstring curl. So I'm planting those feet in, I'm laying out like a wood hamstring curl, keeping tension on my hamstring here, where as you can see now, I'm kind of transferring it forward towards my lower back. So I'm keeping on my hamstring. And now what you don't want to do is dip too far like this. Um, a lot of crossfitters and stuff will do them because they loom really fast. Uh, it depends on your purpose. For me, we're doing it for muscle building and powerlifting, so we really want that isometric kind of control on that eccentric rep. So for me, I like to just elongate my hamstring best I can before it transfers to my back. Posture up, squeeze my glutes and, and uh, hamstrings. And pushing into that pad, squeezing. And that's about that. Knock out a few, get more comfortable. And if you're really crazy, here's three advanced variations for you. Cool, cool, you're a pro now and you want some advanced variations or some other ways to do this exercise. So the first disclaimer I have is double check you're actually doing this properly. A lot of people jump the gun and they go to advanced movements before mastering the basic ones. Make sure you're really engaging with mind-muscle connection, which is actually knowing the muscles you're working. Keep the tension on that hamstring, fully elongated, come up, stretch, get that nice stretch reflex, squeeze into those glutes. Make sure you've mastered this. Now, if you're confident you have, here are three variations you can try. The first one's gonna be a little interesting because it's almost a little bit of an aid, and it's something I recommend if you wanna start out. So you can tie the band to this back right here, this foot rest, and what it's gonna do is as you elongate and stretch, it's gonna support you and make it a little bit easier on that eccentric wrap where you're stretching out the muscle and then it's gonna snap back and help you come up. So the heavier the band you have, this can be a great aid to really learn to do these properly and engage the right muscles. So this can be a really good kind of beginner's intro little help guide. As you can see Kyle doing it here, he's doing it with some steez, some comfort, and some control. So next up is more of an advanced variation, which is where you're using forward weight. So you either have, and this one's crazy, we can't even do this one, you have the bands forward, pushing you downward, and you have to pull against it in that extension. These are really tough, and it's very advanced, but a lot of people can get to them. We recommend using the little red band. Here's Kyle trying his best. It ain't easy, but he's hacking away at it. Number three is another kind of cool variation. Uh, you can just do isometric holds. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. We do them with a bicep. So for squeezing a bicep, you know, you're holding the muscle, packing everything in. It's the same with a hamstring, right? You got your bicep femoris, which is actually the name of one of your hamstrings, because it has the same flexion as a bicep. Flex our bicep like this, and then we flex our hamstring in the opposite manner by kicking up. So you can get the benefit of this by extending through that hamstring, squeezing your butt, holding that, maybe doing a three Mississippi count, and that's just gonna be absolutely nasty, and it's something I really recommend to kind of build muscle. So hopefully you love this video. In fact, I know you did, because it's gonna be the best one on YouTube. We made sure that we spent a lot of time really trying to break this down. So if you appreciate what we do, please subscribe, like, and most of all, share with a friend. It really gets these videos going. Lap pull down, our how-to lap pull down video got over a million views, because people really liked it, and we're confident that this is even better quality content than that. So if you really enjoyed this, and this really helped kind of make sense of this exercise, it means the world to share it on your Facebook, share it with someone who needs it, and that'll do a ton. Next up, uh, we have a form guide that we'd like to give to you for free. So all you need to do is click the first link in the description down below. I think we have over 30 exercises now that we've kind of broken down with pictures and little text guides that you can take to the gym and know you're doing the exercise correctly. And then we also have videos accompanying every exercise like that, and we're continually adding to this playlist. So thank you so much for checking in. Comment down below if you like this video, and we'll see you in the next upload. Peace. Peace.